in the house and cannot see them come back in the jail system, that's what's so fragile right now, that while we're seeing these improvements, I'm really wondering how much that that will hold based on how tough it is to live in the city. I, I completely agree with you. And my question is, I mean, I, I do outreach in SNF private SROs, and we encounter folks that are, who are, whose rent is being paid for by probation or by other programs, and I don't, I'm not clear on all the streams, so some of them might come under, I presume some of them come under NOVA. Um, the issue we're finding is that if they're not paying their rent out of their own pocket, they don't have the same rights as other renters. Um, and so they are, are, are subject to being evicted without due process. And so they're afraid to report housing violations, code violations. What ends up happening is that people are living in slum-like conditions without, and, and are afraid to report the issues to the Department of Building Inspection, et cetera. And our hands are tied in, in helping them because, and so you know, we figure that we need, we need to speak with the folks that are paying their rent and are, who have agreements with those, with those landlords. Um, so to the extent that the NOVA program does cover folks in some of these buildings, I think that's something we'd really like to, to bring up here. Yeah, the numbers of what NOVA is, in NOVA it deals with a very complicated jail population. It's those that whose um, caseload has been related to the more medium to maximum security. A lot of reentry programs and post-release have only been, have dealt with the non-violent, less medium to lower security. We established NOVA to deal with a very high complicated population that's being uh, released. Um, and to me, that's really where the role of the DICE is to see if they will not reoffend, which is why we've set up with adult probation this kind of pipeline of case management for those folks. Part of that is housing and vocational and job. But based on what housing we have, uh, to really work with, it's a fraction of what we need. It really is. Yeah. It really is. Hey, babe. I have two quick questions, I hope. Now that you're undercrowded, are you still supporting the building of the new jail? And the second question is completely different. Um, are you supporting or not, or can you uh, have an opinion on proposition? I think it's 47. Yeah. Uh, that you change uh, for low uh, nonviolent crimes from the felonies to misdemeanors? Yeah, um, now that I shut down the sixth floor of the Hall of Justice, we're no longer, um, we're no longer undercrowded now that I shut down that jail. And so the need still remains that we must have a better, more humane facility since all of 850 Bryan is going to be demolished. Um, so I still suggest that as long as our numbers are where they're at, that about 13, 1400, or even dip to 1200, we're going to need some new facility. Because San Bruno, the facility can't take the numbers that are out there, and there won't be any jail on the seventh floor anymore, so we don't know where to put them. And it, I know it's strange, and some people who know me as a progressive, you know, that I might. Uh, they might find it bewildering that I support a replacement facility, but those conditions are so inhumane that I, I don't understand how anybody who says no to a new jail is not answering the question, what do you do with those folks that are in our custody? Why should they be subjected to that level of condition? And nobody is coming to their defense as to why are they being allowed to be sardined in this old style jail where we can't get 90% of our programming in there because there's no space. And because a priority of my administration is about connectivity of children whose parents are incarcerated, which is a significant number, I had to reconvert a bathroom with the urinal still intact to have supervised parent-child visits that never occurred before in that particular facility. So I think it's a really incomplete debate of anybody who says, beware of building a new jail, it's going to expand, that's a bunch of hooey. We've already proven for the last three years that we're dipping down our population, but we're not off the hook from answering the question, what about the conditions for those that are in our custody? And since we don't prosecute and we don't sentence, our job is custody, then we need to take care of those that are within our custody. If the numbers disappear to such a degree where we don't need a new facility, I buy into that completely. I also don't think we need a size of the facility that was originally proposed when it came into office. They were saying 903 beds for 903 beds. I disagreed. 
And so we've almost cut it by a third, in my predictions, we'll cut it by another uh, third if the numbers keep going down the way they are. And I do support Prop 47. Um, I think of only one of two sheriffs in the Ohio State that supports Prop 47. Prop 47, uh, which was helped put on by District Attorney George Gascone to lower sentencing of narcotic offenses uh, that are felonies or considered wobblers, felonies or misdemeanors, dropped down to a misdemeanor. Uh, the State Sheriff's Association, which represents all the 58 elected sheriffs in the state of California, is vehemently against this. Um, I'm one of, I think, two that support it. Yes. We have some, excuse me, some community announcements, and we only have 10 minutes left, so we have to wrap it up in a Oh, minutes. I was looking oh. for a time. Okay, can answer one more question? Yeah. 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 Well, it's kind of like a two thing. Um, about your station transfer units, if you want to get implemented in the city of San Francisco fully, what do you expect the percentage of downtime for the SFPD compared to what it is now? I can't speak for SFPD. Okay. Uh, for the second question, your Five Keys Charter High School program, uh, San Francisco, California receives grants from the government about education. What about the uh, inmates who leave and consider dropouts? Is there like a program you or the sheriff's office has been following up to help improve the uh, education? Because this actually reflects the state education level when they're officially moved to high school. Yeah, we've set up now about a, uh, 10 or maybe 12 community Five Keys Charter High School sites. So that for those who are uh, in custody that start the Five Keys program with us, uh, if they don't get their GED, complete their GED or their diploma, they can continue outside. And we hold two graduations a year. I presided over the largest graduation of its history last year, uh, 71 people um, formerly incarcerated and post-release. Um, and it was pretty fantastic. So we just started a few months ago City College uh, in the jail system. So because the high school is really well um, offered, um, then the question is what do you do when you max out on that level of education? So City College really should have a role, but they've been so unstable, we've been trying to woo them in. And they just started a pilot, two pilot classes for us now. And with that, I want to thank you for coming, sir. Yeah, let me, if anybody wants, I have a card, we do a newsletter, we do a lot, so if you give me a card or send me an email, then I'll make sure you're on our own list. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. 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 Thank you.